Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and uh, had a viewer post this over on my Facebook fan page so I'm going to flip in here for you guys. Uh, and it's another update from Dr. Lane Norton. Um, most of you are aware of he and I's past at this point. We don't really need to rehash any of that. But uh, yeah, he is still suffering major debilitating injury. So um, let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing. Do a little bit of crafting and let's talk about this. Um, this is a case of, I don't want to have to do this, I told you so here. Um, but this is a case of a valuable lesson for all the viewers out there. Uh, I mean, this really highlights a lot of what I've been saying about people giving dangerous and bad advice out there that is hurting people, that hurts themselves. Uh, Lane has been injured repeatedly over and over and over. And I know a bunch of people are going to come in and say, well, you know, if he's going to be a champion, injuries come with it. That's not true. That is absolutely not true. There are tons of powerlifting champions who lift a hell of a lot more weight than he does. Uh, who don't suffer these sort of injuries. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way. And the thing is, you know, people be like, well, he lifts more than you. I said, well, no, he doesn't, not anymore. And I'm actually doing pretty decent right now. If you guys watched uh, my recent training, uh, you know, I just did 500 pounds uh, for seven reps on the deadlift, leaving reps in the tank. No belt, conventional deadlift, no sleeves, no belt, nothing. Just work boots shorts and a t-shirt on okay and some chalk uh so i'm doing decently well that's pretty good for rep work and considering i'm about to turn 40 and that's the thing i look at to highlight uh with all of this you know i mean i've suffered major debilitating illness that put me in bed back when i was his age i was 100 percent medical disabled uh he and i are exactly five years apart we share the exact same birthday and i know that's crazy we have the exact same birthday coming up next month I'm about to turn 30, or I'm about to turn 40, oh my God, I'm about to turn 40, uh, and he's turning 36. He can't squat or deadlift. And you know, this is someone who tens of thousands of people take his training advice. A lot of people run his programs, they take his training advice, and again, I've had a lot of people come in the comments here and say, yeah, they started getting injuries and stuff trying to run his fat program, or, which is just a template. It's not a true program, it's a template. Uh, which he did say before, and I, I agree on that. But you have someone who, you know, he always says, my technique is fine, my technique is fine, when tons of coaches have come in and said, no, it's not. Your technique on your squats are terrible. Your technique on a lot of your stuff is terrible. That's, what you're, that's why you're getting hurt. And keep in mind, he started getting hurt long before he was a powerlifting champion. Uh, that first pec tear that he had, well, he was nowhere near being a champion in powerlifting. You know, and he always talks about comebacks and screams about comebacks, and he's been injured over and over, and he's like, I'm always going to come back. And I said a few months back when he got hurt, I'm like, I made a video on it and said, dude, uh, I mean, I know you and I have had our differences, but you really don't want to do this because I'm going to have to do I told you so. If you keep up with this nonsense, you need to check your ego at the door. You are literally one of the most egotistical people in this entire industry. And he is. He's so egotistical that coaches who are more knowledgeable than him, he tells them, that he's not listening to them and he continues with techniques that are going to hurt him. He continues with frequencies and training volumes that would hurt him or hurt anybody and tells everyone else that he knows better while he keeps getting hurt. I mean, the guy is so egotistical and has this insane bully complex, accuses me of bullying him while the guy was spending tens of thousands of dollars harassing me with lawyers and admitting funding a campaign that resulted in the stalking, the real life stalking of members of my family and loved ones. You know, while he's accusing me and everyone of bullying him, it's like, dude, you are an insane egomaniac. And this is a perfect example. The guy, uh, I know he saw my video because people had linked it to him and he had commented a while back on it and that he was going to show everyone to make a comeback. And I'm like, no, you're going to hurt yourself further. You're going to be in a wheelchair. The guy continues to do his crazy stuff after a back injury, uh, disc problems in his neck, and now he can't squat or deadlift at all. He suffered a major lower back injury that's very probably going to be career-ending. And he, to this day, this is later, this is weeks later, or is it months later? I'm not even sure. He still can't squat and deadlift. And yet he's still, I'm going to come back, I'm going to come back. And it's like, you are going to cripple yourself and put yourself in a wheelchair. And that's the scary part. People need to be watching this. People who have been taking his advice and they're like, oh, outwork, outwork, overcome. The human body has limits, okay? Egos might not have limits, 
This man's ego doesn't have limits, but his body does. All of our bodies do. And when you push those bodies beyond those limits, your ego will not keep disc in your back from shattering. They will not keep tendons from ripping off of your bones. I don't give a fuck how much ego you have. You, none of us are Superman. We are not fucking invincible. Just like this guy back when he started stuff with me with posting all over his Twitter, I'm the indestructible god of war. Lane, you're not. You're not fucking indestructible. You're finding that right now and you're about to cripple yourself and be in a wheelchair the rest of your fucking life because you can't get this through your egotistical fucking head that you are not indestructible. And you're taking all of your followers with you. All of you people who have listened to this man and taken his training advice and run his programs and you're getting hurt and nagging injuries, this man is crippling himself while screaming he's going to come back. He's about to be in a fucking wheelchair if he keeps this up. You people need to get a clue and realize he's an egomaniac. That's the reason he just keeps pushing and pushing. And now his body can't keep up with his ego. It's like people are always like, oh, you should get revenge on him. And I'm like, why? Why do I need to get revenge on a man who's wronged me, who's such a fucking egomaniac that he is ripping his own body apart and is about to be crippled for the rest of his life because he can't get his own ego in check? I don't need to get revenge on someone like that. He's doing it to himself. You know, it's not necessary. But the thing is, all of you who've been following his advice all these years, stop and look at this. Uh, this man has destroyed his body with his training methods. If you're trying to imitate his form, you're trying to imitate his training protocols, stop and think this through for a minute. Take a long, hard look. And you guys can think whatever you want about me, but I'm about to turn 40. I still rep 500 pounds for work sets on the deadlift. Pain-free, no belt, no sleeves. My body doesn't hurt. My body doesn't ache. And I'm a 40-year-old man who still gets in and lifts three days a week. And I'm doing pretty good for 40, all things considered. Uh, no complaints. Uh, my hips are great. My elbows are great. My shoulders are great. My back's great. I don't have injuries. I don't have nagging pains. Uh, my body feels good. Uh, I'm doing better than everyone else I know, all my other friends at my age. Uh, you know, guys, it's about being smart with your training. It's about thinking these things through and really understanding what causes injury and understanding the limits of your body. And when you respect those limits and you treat your body correctly and you load it correctly in the gym, your connective tissue and your joints and your tendons get stronger and they stay strong and they stay healthy. Now, is it possible for all of us to have injuries? Yeah, I mean, even I'm throwing around a, a lot of weight. It's possible to get injured, but those are going to be one-off. When you have someone like this who just keeps getting hurt over and over and over and refuses to listen, it's scary. And because his ego is so big about it and he has such a big cult-like following, none of his followers ever question if his training is dangerous when it clearly is. Um, and it's just something people need to think about. And the same thing I saw here that was scary. He's talking right there about all this band training for his life. Oh, man, what do they call it? Blood flow restriction training. Blood flow restriction training is dangerous. It's stupid. And I keep telling people not to do this. You know, I get asked about it. I'm like, occlusion training is completely absurd. Uh, and I've seen the data on it. Uh, the data is not convincing to me at all because the data isn't done with proper controls. So when people are like, well, it produces all these metabolites that are uh, just as effective as doing a heavier weight when they're doing these really, really light weights. But I'm like, uh, where's the control group that's doing the same thing without the bands? Meaning you're comparing a different rep range, dramatically different rep range and intensity, one with the bands, one without. Where's your control group? How do you guys know that if someone tried to do the same light weight to failure without the bands that they wouldn't produce even more metabolites? Anyone think of that when they look at this data on this training? There are no controls in place. You know, yet you see a bunch of people promoting it. Um, I've seen Alberto Nunez promoting it. I've seen a few YouTubers report it, uh, support it. Uh, Lane 
uh, supports it. It's dangerous and it's stupid. You guys are wrapping tourniquets around your limbs. You're restricting blood flow. All right, you're restricting blood flow to muscles that you are trying to work. That is fucking moronic. All right, and the evidence is not there showing that it's superior in any way. Stop and think about that. The only studies that have been done on it that show that it's equal to other training do not have a proper control group in place. We have plenty of studies. We actually have had some studies come out and show that ultra high rep training produces more metabolites than moderate rep training. Anabolic metabolites, like using 20% to failure for ultra high reps. There have been studies that show that it produced more anabolic metabolites. That doesn't guarantee more muscle growth, but more metabolites than training uh, with heavier weight in the moderate rep range. So when you have these other studies showing that the blood flow restriction training is as good as the other stuff, how do you know it wouldn't have produced more metabolites without the bands? How do you know you might not have been able to do more work without the bands with the same lighter weight and therefore produce more metabolites? We don't have a control group, and I think we don't have a control group because the people who are trying to study blood flow restriction are trying to get in on a trend. And I think they're trying to promote it, and they're scared that if they put in a proper control group, it would show that it was inferior. Just throwing it out there, just something that I've considered as a possibility. And then you got Lane doing this on top of it. So in addition to all his normal training, which has repeatedly injured him, uh, it's now got him to where he can't even physically squat or deadlift anymore because of his back injuries and spine injuries. So now he's on top of it. Since those won't work, he's doing blood flow restriction in his limbs. Uh, and, you know, again, his whole audience is watching this, and he's promoting this now for everyone to do, which I consider to be a dangerous form of exercise. So uh, stop and think on that, guys. Uh, it just baffles my mind. It baffles my mind that someone uh, has a Ph.D., an advanced scientific degree, uh, a strong knowledge of biochemistry and all this other stuff, and yet he promotes insane dangerous training methods and is so injured and banged up uh, from it and promotes them still to his followers and can't admit that he's wrong. Um, it's just downright scary. And ultimately, uh, it's like watching this. This guy's egomania is going to be the end of him with this. Um, you know, he's going to put himself in the grave with what he does. It's just crazy.